The armies of the North had united and now seemed to be on the attack everywhere. Imperial forces, while still far more numerous, lay stretched over thousands of miles. Their position was untenable, and Nilfgaard's commanders knew this. In a decisive battle, they yet stood a chance, so they gave said battle and suffered a resounding defeat. Just a few months on from that memorable night in Rivia, the Imperial army was in utter disarray. Aldersburg, the fortress, remained a last point of resistance. General Ep Dahi and what had survived of Army Group East had dug in there. This place, where Nilfgaard had triumphed grandly in the war's early days, would now bear witness to its impending defeat. It seems history, after all, has a sense of justice, or humor, or both. Though Meave had already reclaimed her realm, she refused to retire her sword just yet, for King Demavend had requested her aid in purging Edern of the invader. How could she refuse? She owed the king a favor, firstly. Yet she also had a burning desire to settle the score with Epdahi. Demavend's envoy and I spoke, Your Majesty. The king has Aldersburg surrounded. He awaits and won't begin the assault till you arrive. Good. I truly hate to miss it. Tell the troops to prepare. Gia and Aya. Of course, Your Grace. Yes? Is there something else? Pardon my boldness, Your Grace, but... I can't help but be concerned. You don't sleep. You have the air of illness about you. Reynard, I just buried my son, who died in my arms, God damn it. Yes. Died a hero. Your Majesty, I wasn't sure Willem could ever wash away the shame. He'd betrayed his country, his mother, aligned with the fiercest of our foes. But his actions in Rivia washed away his wrongs. Willem showed himself worthy to be called your son. I don't say any of this to deepen your grief, Your Majesty. I mean merely for you to be proud of him. Do you know why Willem died? Well, he opened the gate for us, and... He died because I ignored him, neglected him. It's why he betrayed me as well. Why he was in that castle with our foe. He is worthy to be called my son. I... I just don't know if I'm worthy to be called his mother. We've talked enough. We must march on to Aldersburg. Your Grace, if I may. Some of our comrades in arms would like a word with you. The war nears its end. Paths are likely to diverge. I see. Thank you. I shall stop by the mess tent later. Good to see the Queen. How can I help you? Our conversation in Mahakam. Do you recall it? When you resolved to join my force, leave your homeland? Of course. Clear as day, that. You saved me and my clan. I'm in your debt. Will be for some time. Well, we've won the war. And you had a hand in the victory. Heavily so. As I see it, you've more than repaid your debt. Feeling a wee bit choked up, as King Desmond said when an assassin's bolt ran clear through his esophagus. Come here and give us a squeeze. 
Later, perhaps. But Gabor, any plans for what comes next? Ha! I wasn't expecting to have this chat, so I, I'm a bit caught with my knickers doing past my knees. War's over, but we've much left to do. Our relations with non-humans, for instance. I mean to improve them. And I think you could help, Gabor, greatly so. Meaning you'd like me to stay in your court? I'd see it as an honour, Your Majesty. An honour true. We shall return to this conversation later. No skin off my back. We see each other, Your Grace. Huh? What is it now? The war nears its end. Sadly. Sadly? Why? I survived. Again. Rebuild your land, Queen. Enjoy your life. Me and my men. We'll be moving on. Arnulf. In Lyria and Rivia, your past matters not. Nor does your shame. Stay. What about after? What do I tell my ancestors when the time comes? I yearn to sit at their table, lass, and drink mead in their company, so go I must. So long, Anjolf. I'm pleased to see you again, Mom. You need something? The war's near its end. The future, what does it hold for you, Isbel? Wise counsel will always find a place at my court. Mm, a tempting offer, ma'am. So be it. I shall stay. But I've one condition. You're never to force me to wear shoes. <laughs> These terms I can agree to. Duty calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Maeve, I must say it again, I'm sorry. And I thank you for forgiving me. No need to say any more, Gascon. But you've got to know. Every time you bring it up, I'm tempted to change my mind. Now let's turn to the task at hand. Listen. I'd wish to speak again of... Wait, I know what of, and you know it's a topic I'd rather not dwell on. It won't help to let those thoughts fester. And what would help, barring a magical leap into the past, of course? Ugh. Maeve... Believe me, I've shed tears enough for my family. I've no need to think of it. No need to speak of it. And certainly not with you. So, what awaits you now? What will you do? Been contemplating it of late. Thought I might go back to the life of an outlaw. Not that I'd expect you to approve. You're quite right, I wouldn't. It's why I wish to make certain you'll not feel tempted. Gascon, I hereby bestow upon you a number of estates near Scala. What? Maeve, uh... Oh, damn it, I, I don't know what to say. Ha! <laughs> a first? Thank you, Maeve. A thousand thanks. Tis I who should thank you. With all my heart. It's time I attended to other matters. Farewell. Your Grace. I wished once more to express my gratitude for your show of mercy. I showed mercy, true, but felt much more. Anger, pain, now resentment. You hurt me, Raynard, wounded me to the bloody core. I don't know what else to say on the matter, so let's not speak of it. As you wish, Your Grace. The war nears its end. What next for Raynard Odo? Whatever you command, Your Grace. Ugh. 
Is something amiss, my lady? It's nothing, Reynard. Unimportant. It's time I attended to other matters. Worked in a mess once that served no meat, not even sausage. <laughs> Weren't long before the men rioted. And wait, I wager you'll chase the Emperor himself off the throne. They say war's a man's affair, but you showed them, my lady. They say war's a man's affair, but you showed them, my lady. The Lyrian army had grown into a great serpent. So much so that riding at the column's tail, Meave could not see its head. Footmen, cavalry and archers stretched like a glistening snake between two horizons. Meave had come a long way indeed, and she felt proud. Suddenly, Meave heard angry cries and the clash of steel against steel all at the column's front. Those right to the left! March left! Support the flank! Meave drew her sword, spurred her horse, and galloped forward along the line of troops. Then, through the swirling battle dust, she spotted shimmering golden suns. Hundred and fifty two, hundred and fifty four. Scrubbing duty again, oh, gods. No? Ah. <laughs> Must be an important lesson in this. But what? The bigger they are, easier they are to target. about slings, they hide well.
Wait, you're serious? There's the truth! You mad? Don't shake that! Got any vegetables? Hungry like a wolf, I am. to the front yet again. This could hurt. Normally disciplined, determined to an extreme, these Nilf guardians quickly broke rank and ran. Deserters! Leaderless cigarettes! A scout reported. Headed south, they was, towards the frontier. Chained prisoners now sat along the dusty road. Meave stopped in front of one. He was ragged and unshaven. Flies had taken an interest in his poorly bandaged hand. Spotting the queen, he lowered his head and quivered with terror. I know you take us for savages, began Meave, her gaze passing over several scraggy black clads. But fear not. We shan't flay you alive nor eat you for dinner. And when a truce is signed, you'll be sent home. Where I most sincerely hope you'll stay this time. As the Queen mounted her horse, she barely concealed a grimace. Her thighs were sore and chafed, her hands raw from the reins. But she bit her lip and rode on, for the prize was now very near. It was in Aldersburg when it fell. Bro it was in Aldersburg when it fell. Broke my heart, that did. But not complete. Now we'll take it back. Other kings could learn a thing or two from you, your majesty. Fight on! It was we who were to offer Lyria our aid. Things got turned right round. We was in Aldersburg when it fell. Broke my heart, that did. The good mothers guided you to victory. Nilfgaard angered the gods. Too much pride in them, not enough humility. The entire North owes you thanks, my lady. And you, the gods. The entire North owes you thanks, my lady.
Neve was listening to a scout's report when screams suddenly burst from the prisoner transport. In a moment, Meave bore witness to a truly macabre sight. The Nilfgaardian captives, to whom she had recently been merciful, lay dead, massacred in cold blood among the camp's tents. Blast it all! Seed the Queen, looking at the bloodied corpses. Those responsible for the deed, peasants from the quarry at Ravencluft, Meave had welcomed into her ranks. The harm they'd endured from Nilfgaardians wielding whips. This was what had festered in their hearts and minds. The Rivians couldn't accept that their oppressors had gone unpunished. So they took matters into their own hands, in defiance of the Queen. There's fiends, not folk, cried the peasants, now armed and in uniform. They was old, this, plain and simple. It had been justice by a mob, and Meave knew it should not go unpunished. Yet at the last, ignoring her advisor's counsel, she left the former slaves' fate for their commanders to decide. For the Queen had grown weary of choosing between two evils, each one darker than the other. Long live me! Long live the Queen! Long live a liberator! All's left is to drive the black clads from Aldersburg, and the war's won. Our Demovens not bad, but he don't hold a candle to Meave. Long live Meave! Long live the Queen! Long live a liberator! Meave noticed one of her scouts, a certain Corporal Larkin, halt his mount and train his gaze on the woods. Your Grace, I thought I heard something, could have sworn. A whisper, maybe, but... Mm, nothing now. It's all gone quiet. I think I might have imagined it, in fact. Imagined? Meave placed her hand on his shoulder. No one has sharper senses than you. If you claim to have heard something, it's worth a closer look. Corporal Larkin saluted, then rode past the trees. Suddenly in shadow, he keenly scanned his surroundings. Something caught his attention. He dismounted, then brushed aside ferns, exposing tracks made in the mud. Your Majesty! He shouted, quickly turning towards the road. Sound the alarm! It's squirt! An arrow whisked through the air, pierced his throat and suddenly silenced him. Then the forest came alive with cries in the elder tongue. Elves on the attack.
It's a trap! Two arms! Show me the coin or sod off. Nay, do one they came est. None shall tread on us! See who is weak. Blood washes away all shim. Oh, my little day. Thing about slings, they hide well. May your sword and arm be one. Everything all right? I was hoping you'd say that. Renner, stop! We surrender! The Scoia'tael fighters stood no chance against Meave. When the sounds of battle finally ceased, the Queen, victorious, tossed aside her arrow-studded shield. She then ordered the commando's leader brought before her. She'd expected a ranter who would turn up his nose, spit in her face, and cry, Death to all Dwan! But the bloodied elf before her was no arrogant firebrand. He averted his gaze, and his lips gently trembled. Youthful you look, elf. How many summers to you? Thirty? More? Twenty-seven, my lady. Twenty-seven. A wonderful age. A shame to die so young. I beg you, Renna. For mercy, I ask. If not for me, then at the least for... Mercy? You jest. You wait in ambush, come at us like bandits, and now 
Now you dare ask for mercy. It was no ambush. Don't blame me for a fool. I know what I saw, and I'm no stranger to Warcraft. It's not you we wish to fight. Zvere. Then who killed Corporal Larkin, hmm? Werebobs? When we saw you on the high road, we fell back and hid in the wood. We wanted you to pass. Your scout's hearing, very keen. He heard something, then spotted our tracks. You must understand, we had no choice. You know you might have surrendered. Like Dristan's commando. Is that what you mean? They laid down their arms before an Adernian general who ordered them hanged, one and all. If we're to die, we prefer to die bows and swords in hand. Why are you here? Were you to rescue Epdahi? Rescue someone? No, Renna. We flee. The Nilfgaardians have realized they'll lose the war and have renounced us. Without their support, we stand no chance. Demavent has loosed his hounds. They hunt our units one by one. He's offered 50 gold pieces for the head of each Scoyatel. It's the same in Temeria and Kedwen, if not worse. We wish to join with your Veth's unit, flee together as far as we could. It was our last hope. Why do you tell me all this? Because you listen still. You've not ordered me killed, so... You've clearly a heart. Eseth Aina Edu. I beg you. So few of us remain. All tired, all wounded. We pose no threat. Let us leave your realm. Let us flee. I don't rule these lands. I'm not queen here. It's for Demaven to judge you, not me. Deliver us to him and you know what fate awaits us. I do. But I know not what fate we face if I release you. Perhaps you'd leave in peace. Or perhaps another would stumble across your path and, like you did Corporal Larkin, you would have to kill them too. A risk I'm not willing to take. So, death for us all. Is the lesser evil here? Meave gave no reply. His eyes downcast, the elf nodded, then lifted his arms to be chained. Meave sent the Scoyatel to Demavend. What became of them, you ask? The end of their story is not hard to surmise. Yourself to our new view for a better future through and through. <laughs> fresh eggs, fresh eggs for sale. Sausage, cheese, milk, exotic silks, berries and grains expel without a strain. As ever, the market in Harmelin bustled with life. Though that particular day, Meave was earnestly surprised at the sight. For just months before, Nilfgaard had leveled the city. Harmelin's rebirth was now well underway. Folk hammered and soared, 
and the scent of fresh mortar filled the air as the city rose from its ashes. In spite of the chaos, the mayor recognized the queen. He rushed over to greet his illustrious guest. All this must cost a veritable fortune. Where did you get the coin, good man? It's a loan. Altogether unbelievable. A vast sum at a very low rate. To be repaid a century down the line. <laughs> my, my. A banker with deep pockets and a generous spirit. Droll, I'd say, if I wasn't eager to meet him. Nothing simpler, Your Grace. He lives in a house on the Market Square. Intrigued, the Queen asked to meet the mysterious financier. And who should come out to greet her, if not Mirko Vidmar? When last they'd met, Meave had helped the Dwarf to raise the funds for his enterprise. I cannot believe my eyes! My royal benefactor! Oh, didn't I just stand there? Come in, come in! The bank was a frantic flurry of activity. Papers rustled, coins clinked, and stamps slammed the countertops. You gave the city a loan, I heard. Preferential, to say the least. An entire century to repay it. What's the rush? Fact is, I enjoy seeing them work. The progress they make, it's mental. Every last one of them builds what he wants. <laughs> In Mahakam, we'd spend a year debating whether to pound a nail nine times or ten. <laughs> The Queen and Mirko shared a sumptuous dinner, they toasted his success, and she set off once more. The following morn, the quartermaster approached. A vexed grin on his face, he reported the news. Soldiers had found a chest in one of the wagons. When opened, it proved to be brimming with gold. None could say for certain whence it had come, but Meave had her suspicions. Birds, foundations, hoist the walls, then we're revel in its halls. Everyone's doing their part to rebuild the homeland. Birds, foundations, hoist the walls, then we're revel in its halls. Master Mirko advises against taking on any credit in Kaviri Marks or Pavisian Byzant. No profit to be had. If only all the midgets were like Master Mirko, why, we'd get along just famously. Dwarves offer the lowest interest rates. Coincidence? <laughs> Master Mirko advises against taking on any credit in Kaviri Marks or Pavisian Byzant. No profit to be had. Side, Majesty. Side by side, we'll kick those black clads across the Yoruba. Long live Eden! Long live Rivia! Long live Hyrule! Hey, uh, Lyria! Side by side, we'll kick those black clads across the Yoruba. Lyrian corps neared Aldersburg, and it could not have been on a more idyllic day. The sun shone, birds sang, trees rustled in a light breeze. But Meave saw it as she had at the war's start. Walls illumined by a fire's glow, the cries of fleeing civilians, the stench of burning flesh. As on that day, Aldersburg was under siege. Yet this time, Eden's flags fluttered in the field, while Nilfgaard's tattered sons crowned the fort's towers. The Queen found Demoven's tent without difficulty. Made of sheets of silk edged with silver thread, it positively shone. Seems the realm's restored to a virtuous path, muttered Meave. Aha! There she is! Queen Meave! 
savior of the north, the Sun Slayer. Mockery I don't appreciate. I wouldn't dare. Not my words, those. You've been painted thus in song. Master Dandelion himself wrote a ballad, The Battle for the Bridge. If you take the bard at his word, you're as fierce with a blade as any witcher. Hmm. Is that jealousy I hear? To be perfectly honest, Meave, it is. For I hadn't the pluck, nor resolve. And when all the North tucktail went to shite, you alone stepped up and bared your fangs. Let it be a lesson for the future to us all. You called out the future. Tell me, how's your son? Baldwin. Ah, oh, growing like a weed he is. And the spitting image of his old man. Good news all, especially given the mother's profession. She's now Countess Demaretta of Gullet, a lady of the court. Ooh, your lawful wife must be thrilled. Hard to say in truth. I've not seen her in some time. Duty keeps me away, you understand. Hmm. You work hard, I'm certain. Many a night, too. <laughs> you might say so indeed. But enough about me. As we're chirping away like two gossips in the field, do tell me, what a villain. He perished in the assault on Revere Castle. Fighting for which side? The right one. Demavend, the wound is fresh, the pain immense. I'd rather we not speak of it. A lesson for the future? What do you mean? My dear, this war won't change a bloody thing, you know. Nilfgaard will be Nilfgaard, the North, the North. We'll sign a truce, the Blackclads will turn tail towards home. But the old borders don't satisfy us all. I'm perfectly satisfied with them, thank you. And I just wish other folk would respect them too. You're one hell of a warrior. But you're no strategist at all. Your perspective, you've got to broaden it. Nilfgaard, we cannot allow it to regain strength and spirit. Else we'll face another invasion within a decade or two. Measures are required. Preventive, preemptive, whatever the learned call it. Build an army, a vast one, wait in ambush, and when they least expect it, break their bloody spine. Just think, if we were to join forces. Enough. I don't wish to hear it. Won't even entertain the thought. I'll help you take Aldersburg, but then I'll go home, where, God's willing, I'll live to a ripe old age. As you wish. We can mount the assault at any time, but... But? My scouts report a small Nilfgaardian force approaching from the south. They've stayed off the roads, moved only under the cover of night, escorting someone. Who? I've no notion. Could be a mage. Devilishly unpredictable, that lot. Could wreak havoc in our ranks. Either way, before we rush at the walls, we must make certain they don't reach Aldersburg at all. I shall see to it. Are you sure? You've just arrived. Must be weary after the long journey. An understatement if I ever heard one. But I wish all this to be over, quickly. Neve set out after the Nilfgaardians immediately, a cavalry escort in tow. Her unmatched scouts who had led the army through the mountains of Mahakam and Angren swamps, quickly found the enemy's trail. This way, Your Grace. It's not far now. That very same day, Meave's force caught up to the mysterious black-clad unit. Lyrian riders surrounded the foe, forcing the Nilf Guardians to halt. All fell so quiet, the creaking of taut Lyrian bowstrings could be discerned. The common tongue. Which of you knows it? I do, Your Majesty. You also know who you deal with, I see. 
What is your name? Coldwin, your majesty. At last, an Ilfgaardian name I can pronounce. So, Coldwin, it seems this war will reach its end in two days' time at the most. It would be silly to die today, wouldn't you agree? It would, my lady. Precisely. I've spilled enough blood. I've lost the appetite for more. So, provided you don't give me a good reason to kill you, you'll walk away with your lives. Now tell me, you carry something for General Epdahi. What is it? A letter. Urgent to the point of insanity, it must be. Who wrote it? The dear Madame Epdahi? No, Your Majesty. The Emperor. My, my. A letter from Amir himself. You must be an important person. A noble, or... Hmm. Yet your uniform is simple, with no discernible distinctions. Who are you truly, Coldwin? A spy? A simple messenger, Your Majesty. Don't lie. I know messengers, how they travel. Alone, armorless, atop a swift steed. You're escorted by cavalry of the heavy sort. For I often carry orders the recipients don't wish to perform, thus the escort. Give me the letter. I've sworn to deliver it to General Epdahi, or to die in the quest to do so. Oh, very well. My translator shall read this letter, then return it to you. You shall break no vow, and who knows, you might even survive. And if I refuse? Guess. So be it. I accept your offer. Meave's translator cracked the seal and read. And as he read, his eyes grew wide as saucers. Then he whispered in the Queen's ear. Truly, you are certain you are not mistaken. The wonders of this world. Coldwin, consider this your lucky day. I allow you to complete your mission with one proviso. And that is? That when you hand him the letter, you will give the General my regards. As Caldwin and Escort set off towards Aldersburg, the Lyrian soldiers looked at their Queen with disbelief. To leave a Nilfgaardian to fulfill a secretive task. We failed to stifle a rather mean laugh. They'll understand tomorrow, she thought. General Epdahi had prefaced Lyria's and Rivia's invasion with a series of arrogant demands. The Nilfgaardian had been impudent, as he had felt sure he'd achieve a quick and decisive victory. Yet several months on, he too received an ultimatum. One signed by Emperor Emir Var Emreis himself. The missive was concise and left no room for interpretation. With General Epdahi dead, the Nilfgaardian army descended into chaos. The kings of the north, united, took advantage and struck at the foe. Their victory was complete. The Nordling forces cheered their commanders and monarchs, but for none so vehemently as the one queen among them. Many dream of achieving the impossible. Meave had done it. Through wit, determination and boldness, she had thwarted the Nilfgaardian invasion. The Queen would rule for many more years. Stern, yet ever just. Ah! So alas saved the North from the Black Clans. That is one way to put it. Well, I'll be damned. And a chap, she find herself one in the end? Leave it be, bloke's been spinning the tail all night. Story's done, time we got some shut-eye. Yes, particularly as we've yet a long road before us. Phew, throat must be parched as old leather after all that. <laughs> Except, uh, I'm itching to know what happened to the lot of them. Rainard, Gascon. Ah, oh, very well. Whom shall we start with? Villem, a pawn, a tool in others' hands. Most, if not all, had seen him thus. 
Yet in the end, he proved his worth soundly. Though he'd started the war a traitor, he perished in the fray a hero, and would be remembered as such. Having settled in Rivia, Gascon embarked on a life worthy of his noble origins. In doublet and ruff, he looked to his ample fields and livestock in daytime, attended banquets and feasts come the eve. And then one night, he grabbed his bow and quiver, saddled his favorite mount, and disappeared without a trace. As news of the Nordling victory filtered south, Nilfgaard's inhabitants greeted it with disbelief. Returning Imperial soldiers told stories of Lyria's cruel queen, who murdered prisoners and sullied sacred laws. They referred to her as Gvaeldet, the bloodthirsty one. With the advent of peace, tensions waned. Lyria's and Rivia's disparate races seemed to live harmoniously, side by side. The Queen pressed for new laws aimed at curbing oppression. They were a step towards more enlightened rule, yet sadly were habitually broken. And Meave? As I said, she ruled with an iron hand, not fist. Ever alone, ever strong, dousing dissent with commanding gestures. She was beloved, I've no doubt. Yet her subjects always breathed easier when her gaze moved on from them to someone else. And now, if you'd allow me... Of course. Leave him be, lads. Let him get some rest. Till the time comes for the next tale.